Hello, my name is Ishai Carmiel, and today I'm going to talk about the future of voice and specifically the next generation of speech synthesis and speech in speech to speech technologies. So before we start, let me just give you a little bit of background about myself. I've been working in human language understanding for more than 15 years, specifically in speech technologies. I started working on deep learning for speech a little more a little bit more than 10 years ago. And one, and, I, and one of the interesting things that um, at least I see right now is that there is a paradigm shift from what we call a analysis to synthesis. Uh, and what does it mean? It means that basically up until now, we used a AI to analyze data that is generated by humans. And we can think about examples like object recognition for computer vision a text for text analysis and speech recognition for transcription. And one of the things that is happening right now is that there is a paradigm shift uh, towards what we call AI synthesis, which is using a AI to generate new type of data. And we can see that as, for example, like stable diffusion models that are generating new types of art, DAL-E, a large language models that are generating new type of content creation for text. And from my perspective, uh, the question is that what's gonna happen with voice? And if you are thinking about it, voice is some kind of a really major pillar of, the, of one of the data types that we're using on a daily basis. If you are thinking about it, we are talking about images, text, and voice. And the question is that how, what we call AI synthesis or generative AI is gonna affect voice. So when we are talking about voice, we can think about two types of technologies that have a major impact. The first of all is some kind of a common technology that has been around for quite some time, which is called text-to-speech. And text-to-speech has been around a while, uh, and we're seeing that it's getting improved. And the second type of technology is what we call speech-to-speech. -speech. And speech-to-speech -speech is actually is a very, very interesting new type of technology that is emerging, which is what can we do with a current voice and how we can transform it to a new type of voice. So basically what we're trying to do, we're not, not trying to generate voice from text, rather giving some kind of a human speech, how we can transform it into a new type of speech. Before I start, I just want to talk a little bit about the type of speech applications. Um, if we're thinking about the overall, we can put every type of speech applications into three different buckets. The first application is of course, what we call speech recognition, which in very basic terms, it's the ability of a computer or machine to analyze human voice and specifically transform it into text. The second type of application is what we call speech profiling, which is extracting metadata from speech. Generally speaking, it's any type of speech analysis application that is not speech recognition, for example, can we verify a person? If, if, if somebody is speaking, can we verify that this is the person? Can we identify what type of language is being spoken um, when we are giving some kind of a set of speech? Uh, what type of emotional state you know, the user is speaking? And there are other, uh, other applications that we can think about. And the last part of the technologies is what I'm gonna to address today, which is called speech synthesis, which the ability of a computer or a machine to generate human voice. So let's talk a little bit about text-to-speech. So basically you all heard text-to-speech. Uh, you can hear text-to-speech every on a daily basis with your favorite voice assistant, which is either Amazon Alexa or Apple Siri. You can think about that every time that you're using some kind of a navigation system, there is a text-to-speech behind that. And every, basically every type of human machine interactions that involve a human voice has a text-to-speech systems. So that's what is being used today. And what it can be used, in, and because of the technology is evolving, there are new type of applications that are emerging. Let me just give you an example. Think about that you are a movie producer and you created a movie, but right now you need to do some audio editing scenes uh, into the movie. So the question is that, do I bring the main actor into the studio and do a voiceover, or can I just generate some kind of a voice using text-to-speech? with the actor's voice and just you know, do it in a much, much faster way. Of course, there are a lot of other applications for that, like movie dubbing, 
conversion from a, some kind of a movie from one language to another using the voice. So the amount of applications that are happening is evolving uh, every on, on, on time. I want just to give you a little bit background about how text-to-speech is working. So basically, as I said, the aim of a text-to-speech system is to take a text and convert it into some kind of a voice. And the two main block diagrams that are happening is what we call the NLU, which is there is some kind of a natural language understanding that takes the text and convert it into some kind of another text that serves as an input into what we call the speech synthesis systems, which are two di different type of blocks over here, which is the text to mail and the vocoder. So let me talk a little bit about the NLU system and why basically do we need an NLU for a text to speech system? So if you're thinking about it, a text to speech, um, how people are writing information is different from the input that the text to speech system is needed. Think about that I'm writing my email is abc at gmail.com. What a text-to-speech system needs as an input is what we call the normalized text and how we pronounce it. So if you are thinking about it, the input that we need to provide the text-to-speech is my email is abc at gmail.com. So basically, we need to take this piece of text and buy some kind of a machine learning algorithm and convert it into this piece of text. When we are thinking about numbers, you know, things are getting a little bit even more complicated because numbers can represent different type of pronunciation. So for example, this sentence, my father was born in 1939, over here, you know, these digits represent that. And for example, this, please press 1939. And over here, this computer costs $1,939. So basically we need to create some kind of a, what we call a machine translation algorithm that is taking the, what we call unnormalized text and do some kind of a normalization. The second part of the text to speech systems is what we call just the speech synthesis. And basically what is happening in speech synthesis is that we have two types of systems. One system that takes what we call the text or the type of text that we are using and convert it into what we call a male spectrogram system. And ML spectrogram system is some kind of a speech representation system. And the second type of system is a system that takes this male spectrogram system and convert it into the output speech itself. And this is a new type of a new type of neural network. What does what is the current state of the art of text to speech? Well, first of all, you can definitely hear that text to speech can provide clean voice with no robotic sound. There is a natural intonation. And when we are talking about read speech, um, human-like phrasing is working perfectly well. When we are thinking about the next evolution of, converse, of what we need in terms of text-to-speech, the next challenge is how we can take a text-to-speech system and convert it into a conversational speech. What does it mean, conversational speech? Conversational people talk quite differently in a conversation rather than when they are reading a sentence. And usually today, text-to-speech systems has, have some kind of a challenges in how to create it. The second type of thing is that can we generate um, emotional text-to-speech? Can we make it sound like a more human being with, the, you know, with various emotions? So this image does you know, create some kind of a you know, you know, funny representation, but it's actually representing how we are thinking about text-to-speech, taking this image and convert it into a variety, a variety of different type of emotions that can happen in the text-to-speech systems. And these are the two major challenges that uh, people are addressing today in text-to-speech systems. The next thing that I want to address is what we call speech-to-speech. -speech. Uh, and as I said before, speech-to-speech -speech basically is taking one voice and convert it into another voice. Um, and what does it mean? If we are thinking about one voice and convert it into another voice, there are a lot of type of applications that we can think about. Think about that if I want to, to sound like my favorite gaming character, if I want to sound, a, if I, you know, going back to the movie use case, if, for example, the, you know, the actor is not available and we just want to bring some kind of a stunt that will um, speak and then convert their voice into the actor's voice. So that's another example. 
And, and the more these technologies and things are evolving, the more use cases that are happening today. So if we are thinking about it, how we are going to generate a speech to speech systems. So of, of course, the classical approach would be, okay, let's take a source accent, apply some speech recognition on top of that, convert everything into words, and then synthesize that. And then we're getting some kind of a target voice. The main issue with that is that once we are doing that, first of all, we are stripping 80% of the, the information. Why is that? Because usually there has been a research that when I'm speaking, 80% of how I speak or how I'm delivering the message, it's not with the words, it, it's with how I say that. So once we convert everything into words, basically we strip down 80% of the messaging itself of how we people are used to also want to say that. The second thing that is creating some kind of a problem for that is that speech recognition, there are very well-trained technologies, but sometimes they still introduce some errors and, and misrecognize some words. So if we are converting you know, all, the, all the information into words, there might be a challenge that it's not going to sound or some of the words are going to mis misrepresent it. So as a result, there is a new types of systems that are called speech to speech, where I'm taking the good parts of both of the words and just create what we call a speech to speech system. So it's some kind of a part of a speech recognition, some, some kind of a part of a speech synthesizer without going through the word space. So one application, of course, is what we call voice conversion. Okay. The question about voice conversion is that can we take a source speaker, for example, and this is, for example, the source speaker. I've done nothing wrong, and that's the truth. And this is the target speaker. He felt there was no case to answer. And the question is that can we make the source speaker sound like the target speaker? And this is the result. I've done nothing wrong, and that's the truth. So basically what we have done, we made the source speaker sound like the target speaker. The last part I want to talk about self-supervision in speech. And self-supervision got a lot of attention in text when, for example, four, four or five years ago in 2018, BERT was introduced to text and created the next revolution in NLP. And one of the things that happened are the researchers in the speech area asked, can we do the same? And by asking, can we do the same, is that can we take all the great things that happened in BERT-like language models for speech, uh, sorry, for text, and convert them into speech? So uh, uh, around a year, year and a half ago, researchers from Meta created a technique called Hubert. And this is basically what we have done. So basically they created, a, a, they took a speech, they created some kind of a CNN encoder that creates some kind of an encoding for speech. And then they used the, the classical masking techniques that are used for a bird-like and created some kind of a representation, a new type of representation for speech. So generally speaking, what they have done, they have done two, th they have done two things they have done a language model of speech units and created a new type of representation. The interesting thing about it is that once it's done, it's being done, it created a whole new variety of applications for speech. One of the applications is taking some kind of a very old and classical application like voice compression. So what does it mean voice compression? Voice compression, we are using new voice compression on a daily basis. Every time that I'm speaking with a friend of mine over Zoom or over any type of or any type of video conferencing, they are taking my voice and compress that. The funny thing about voice compression that usually some of these voice compression algorithms are based on 1980s and 1990s te technologies. Uh, and there hasn't been some kind of a major breakthrough for the past 20 or 30 years. So what they have done they have said, okay, let's, instead of, you know, taking the classical representations of voice compression uh, of how things are being done up until now, let's take the new type of representations and apply the Hubert models. And this graph represents something quite remarkable. So here's the thing. This axis represents basically uh, the bit per second basically how many bits are being sent per second. The lower is the better because then we are sending less information. This graph is some kind of a measure that we are using 
to evaluate the quality of the output speech. It's called the Mushra score. This is some kind of a classical technique that we are using. And as you can see, usually the techniques that are being done today or the voice compression, one of the most well-known, it's called Opus. It uses around 9,000 beats per second. It has a Mushra score of around 67. The nice thing about Hubert is that they, take, they created an algorithm that is around 25 times more efficient and sounds better. So think about it, using new type of speech representation, we can create an algorithm that is 25 times more efficient, sends 25 times less information, but on the same time, creates a higher quality. So I strongly recommend, I put in, the, in, in my talk, these two types of links for, for the blog post uh, or by Meta. I strongly recommend if somebody is interested to read that. That's really remarkable and really outstanding results. So the next thing that, um, people are doing is what we call emotional transfer. Uh, emotional transfer is something that is quite interesting, is that can we, given some kind of a speech, can we transform the speech into another type of you know, to transform the emotion? For example, if I'm speaking very neutral, can I transform it into something that sounds very, very happy? So this is, for example, one of, so I'm gonna play you a video so you can see that. And again, here's the link to the Meta blog, AI blog if somebody's interested. Yes, it was a man who asked, a stranger. <laughs> he, it was a man who asked, a stranger. <laughs> Since then, some mysterious force has been fighting us at every step. Since then, some mysterious force has been fighting us at every step. The fourth and fifth days passed without any developments. The fourth and fifth days passed without any developments. So as you can see, um, the applications are quite interesting and they are, and again, what we're talking about self-supervision, it's just a tip of the iceberg of the things that we can do with the new type of these emerging technologies. So just in summary, um, I covered three things today. Um, I covered text-to-speech, which is, of course, a well-known technology that is being used today. It's, it works quite well. It, it still has some challenges, especially in the emotional and the conversational aspect. Speech-to-speech -speech is another type of application that is taking a voice and converting it into another voice. It's gaining a lot of attention right now from the speech community. And it's opened the door to a variety of new type of applications that we're going to foresee in the future. And of course, self-supervision for speech is gaining a, a lot of attention as well and holds with itself a great promise. So I think that you know the future for these type of emerging technologies, we are going to see a lot of very, very interesting applications and new type of things that are going to happen. So thank you very much. I really hope that you enjoyed the talk.